Good day, dear listeners. Steve Preda here with the Management Blueprint Podcast. And my guest today is Vitaly Romachenko, CEO and co-founder of Eli.io, a company that generates learning and development video content with real human narrators from just text. Vitaly, welcome to the show. Hey, Steve. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, I'm excited to have you because you are running a company that is very exciting. Plus, you have a very uh, interesting background. I mean, tell me, how did you evolve from a graphic designer into the founder CEO of an AI-driven business? Thanks. So. Well, it, it was a long journey. Uh, I think I have more than 10 years of overall in software development uh, industry in various roles. Started my career after graduation as a computer engineer starting as a graphic designer. And then uh, I, I worked with the graphics and I started my own business, like the uh, kind of uh, digital agency to help people create websites. And then I, uh, I transitioned into product management, project management, engineering management, was leading, uh, leading big enterprise uh, products, was leading game studio for uh, one of the leading iGaming companies as well. And then always wanted to build a product company. So two years ago, we started Eli with my friends. And yeah, it was quite a journey. So, but happy where I'm at right now. Well, it's not was quite a journey. I'm sure that it is still quite a journey. You're still a young man. Um, so, so let's talk about, um, normally I don't ask about the business, but this is such a, a unique uh, looking business. Tell me a little bit about Eli.io and what are you trying to do here? Yeah, so basically, uh, in, in a nutshell, we help companies generate educational video content with real humans from text. Uh -huh. That's that's our punchline. So we're we're a deep tech generative AI company that developed the technology that allows you to kind of clone yourself, uh, basically by sending us a couple of minutes of your video. Also, we do the voice cloning as well. And once you have your digital copy, you are able to produce video content at scale without recording yourself anymore. So it's like once you have the avatar, you just then type the text or upload text documents or PPTX uh, presentations, and it will be automatically transformed into narrated videos. Also, uh, we support multiple languages. So in one click, you can basically transform your uh, presentations and the written text into multiple languages and could generate and receive the video. So it basically simplifies the process of video creation. And we know how uh, video is booming right now. We see the trend where people stop reading, you know, as they start to, uh, to watch videos. And 65% of web traffic came for video last year. So it's tell us about the importance of video. So that was the main core. And that's what we saw two years ago in, in this opportunity. And that's why we decided to pursue it. That is uh, very interesting and very scary at the same time. I'm, you know, elections are coming up and I'm sure that some people are going to use technology like that to create deep fakes and stuff. But I also have a client who is an extremely busy coach and he sometimes doesn't have enough time to record his podcasts in person and then uh, he uses this kind of technology to, to be on, on a YouTube video uh, himself so so I see both sides of the coin so here is my question which I'm wondering about uh, several years ago I was running a peer group and we had speakers coming to our peer group every now and then and one of the speakers who came in he asked the group what was the biggest takeaway and people had different uh, ideas. And then he said, I tell you what the biggest takeaway you had, it was my energy. So I spent uh, 90 minutes here or two hours and I exhumed a certain energy that is, uh, you know, making you more excited to do the stuff you need to do. So that my question is, does that energy still work when, uh, when someone is recording this kind of video? Can that AI generated, um, I don't know, person or talking, can still uh, transmit this kind of uh, energy? Yeah, awesome question. I would say to a degree because still the, the technology is not perfect. So avatars, when we create the digital copy of, of the human, it's not that emotional as the real human. Uh, mm -hmm. For some people who are kind of uh, more calm, that, that's totally fine. But for some people who are expressive, you know, show hands, that could be a limitation. 
And uh, we're working on this is highly complicated uh, technology. We have big R&D team who's strictly working on that. And uh, this is, as, as I mentioned, it's highly complicated thing to do from engineering perspective. And we have one of the most advanced teams uh, uh, in, in the world who's doing that. So uh, I I think in a couple of years, maybe less than uh, two years, we the, you won't see the difference. So the, the technology would be to a degree where you pretty much want to recognize the the generated video to the real video and the avatars will be again much more expressive more emotional and uh, also you will add gestures uh, where you can programmatically uh, kind of wave the hands you know you, you like your avatar can do some stuff you know with the gestures so in two years you won't see the difference right now yes there are there are still things you know to make it more engaging brave new world a brave new world so uh, so you've been uh, running the business since 2018 or was it two years ago when you started two years ago I think you said yeah so we we actually we incorporated less than two years ago in in February 2022 okay so you're you're running you're the CEO now and so how do you grow a company like that what kind of ways do you find to to get the word out and and to get people engaged with your product? So basically, because we're we're venture backed uh, deep tech company, so there are uh, you know usual route you raise money, you go to venture capitalists and they provide funding, but that was not really the case for us because we launched the company before the war and also uh, when there, there is like the biggest crisis uh, economically and and also from venture capitalists. A perspective it's it's quite hard to raise money now so uh like uh you need to rely on something more than just investors money and you need to try to build lean organization and you know, one of the things that uh by combinator uh, suggested that uh once you raise the round you need to treat it as like it was your last round you know so you always need to build lean organizations that can be scalable without resources and i think that's what we do we had really strong understanding of the customer profile. We we were delivering, delivering fast, building great product. And we started to build traction pretty much organically from inbound marketing and outbound marketing channels, but without huge budgets for marketing. And we're still doing that. So you you always need to have the mindset that you, you will need to win regardless. As, and you need to build the product that people love kind of. And that's how you build the proper product. So it's not about, you know, raising a bunch of money and then you spend it and then you're done. It's more about, okay, if I want to have millions, you know, in funding, how I can build an organization. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's very tough. It's very challenging, but we were able to do that. Uh, and uh, we were able to grow fast around 30% months over months. Uh, we wow. now have more than 1,000 uh, customers. We have big names, big brands using our product and we continue to deliver. So yeah, it, it's just like your uh, dedication and losing okay. is not an option, you know? So, so that's great. So, so, I mean, ultimately every company has to figure out how they can grow organically. So there's uh, virtual venture money is only goes so far, even if you go multiple rounds, ultimately you have to have a model where you can self-sustain and grow on your own. So, uh, so that's a good segue to, what uh, I'd like to ask you about, because in our pre-call, we talked about different uh, ver frameworks to, to grow outbound uh, through LinkedIn and emailing. And uh, and I wonder if you could share with me and the listeners uh, how the how a framework like that works. How can you, um, you know, by, by just using LinkedIn, emails, how can you grow your uh, leads and create leads and, and to generate customers? Yeah, definitely. So I think there are several variations of the customer acquisition frameworks and uh, framework, and also uh, the way how you approach you know the problem. So uh, at the beginning, you will need to define your ICP or ideal customer profile. This is the first step, and basically you need to identify what problems uh, problem are you solving for this particular group. Mm -hmm. If this is a business, then you need to apply like the B two B growth strategy. If this is more like a like a regular 
customer or just regular people and you and you're looking for b2c uh uh segment then it uh, the strategy probably will be different so once you define the your icp your ideal customer file then you basically understood what the problem they have and what's the solution will you kind of provide mm -hmm. to them whether it's a product or a service then you need to define this, uh, the second would be define the channel how you how people will know about you right mm -hmm. and uh again depends on the strategy if it's like a b2c uh th they have certain strategies how you can acquire customers from b2c if it's like mobile app then you have strategies uh, to acquire customers through the um, apple store google store advertising and also sale and stuff but if it's like a b2b uh and especially if it's a bigger checks you will need to probably do a lot of outbound marketing activities such as cold email outreach, LinkedIn outreach. Uh, so this is very important. Usually uh, the best strategy for the startup or the first company to, to define one uh, segment, uh, one, one customer, one segment. Uh, so it's it's better to, to find one scalable uh, channel to, to kind of grow rather than put a lot of efforts on different channels. So you will need to define one channel that you think works better for you and mm -hmm. has the best, the best uh, ROI and scale it. For example, uh, let's say you're a B2B company and you're selling something, some, some product, and you tested Google Ads and you calculated that the customer acquisition costs, for example, like uh, $50, something like that. Uh, and uh, and you are making much more out of this. Uh, uh, you're making much more money from from one leads. And you calculate that how can I scale uh, my Google Ads campaign to to drive more relevant traffic. So it's always uh, good to understand uh, how you can scale and calculate uh, uh, metrics and and data behind your sale. So uh, this would be. Uh, very important. So if we're talking about B2B, as I mentioned, there are several ways that could be uh, paid ads, uh, that could be LinkedIn and uh, email outreach. This is okay. more on, in, uh, yeah, on, on outbound side. Okay, so these are uh, the channels, paid LinkedIn email. Uh, what steps, what's the next step? Yeah, so after that, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't need to experiment with other channels. You, it, it's probably good, you know, to have the content creation strategy and have the blog running, you know, and do the publications. And, and uh, so all of the things are good, but you need to find something that is scalable and that yeah. will work for you. So after you, after you just uh, basically understand your customer, you start to test the uh, different channels and let, let's say you found this uh that outbound marketing is work for you so for linkedin uh, and um, email outreach this is quite a tricky one because it's changing a lot so like two years ago three years ago you could spam you know you can basically generate a lot of uh, emails and then send a bunch of emails and that was fine but it's constantly changing and algorithms are changing as well so now uh, you can uh, define your ICP and start to send the campaigns, but they won't convert in the calls because they sometimes you get into to, to the spam and also the messaging is wrong and people just don't care about emails anymore, you know? So they have a bunch of, every day they have a bunch of emails. So you need to be smart here. So uh, the good thing would be when you're gathering a database of emails, you need to validate them. Uh, also your email uh, that you're using, your domain should be uh, warmed up. So there are tools who, that warm up your email box, uh, that your email, uh, warm up your email uh, domain. Uh, after all of these steps are done, so you need to validate your messaging. Also start different campaigns uh, and they shouldn't be spammy. And th there are some tools that check you actually, like folderly, they check your email body text and and tells you is it spammy or not because if it's spammy then google will mark it as a spam you know and you probably your email de deliverability would be really low so all of these small pieces now matters 
and then uh, probably it's well, not for enough maybe, for you. Maybe I would call these steps after you build your email list. So you you define you found the scalable channel. So define your ideal customer profile. You find the scalable channel. You build your email list. Uh, can be called number four, applying avoidance, spam avoidance tactics, essentially warming up the domain, making sure your uh, copy is not going to be rejected by Google. These are spam avoidance tactics, basically. Yeah, you can basically, choose, you can say, choose your tools, basically. Mm -hmm. If this is email marketing, uh, your main uh, outreach strategy, then yes, choose your choose your tool that you will use to do that properly. Because you can yeah. basically do it manually, one email, at the time uh, per day, this is a strategy as well. But if you want to scale and if you want to send thousands, you need to prepare, you know, uh, prepare your outreach and you need specific tools. So very important right now, what I see from the trends is uh, personalization. And uh, this is a part of the, for your uh, outreach campaigns. You it's It's better if the person who receives email understand that this is a real a real person who sent it to the email yes. to, to them. So you probably need to combine those two things. So it can be, if you're sending email, do the same touch point with LinkedIn. So for example, hey, John, nice to meet you. My name is Italy and you sent this email. Then I found the same John on LinkedIn and saying something like, hey, John, this is Italy. I send you email. Kind of, this is my offer. So you basically developing then multiple touch points. And that's how you show that this is, for, for, first of all, Vitaly is real. He wants something and he he offers something. Maybe I will need to check. So it's it's always about relationships, you know? It's it's not about just, you know, a bunch of emails because nobody reads a bunch of emails. You need to build the trust and, uh, and you're basically fighting for the, um, for attention for attention yeah. uh, of, of uh, your prospects. Okay, so so I found a scalable channel. I built an email list. I chose my tools to avoid being spam. And then I personalize it. And that's it? No, so <laughs> that's that's the, 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 the part of the funeral, right? Uh, and then you start to receive the feedback or, or results, right? So you started your campaigns, you launched it. You start. You receive your first uh, feedback. Uh, the next step uh, would be validate your feedback, change something, and then do it again. Iterate. So validate, iterate. Uh, it's always about the basically data that you're receiving and validation of the feedback. Constant validation of feedback. So you decide you and you decided who you, who you will work with or what the product is to, to create. You decided the channel, you launched the campaign, you test it out, you got the results. Then you try, okay, what should I improve? Or should I scale? Or should I hire more salespeople? Or should I hire more email? Or should I change the ICP? So you you did it and, and you validated it. And when you're talking about the ICP, the, fir the first step, uh, uh, you can, uh, after the campaign, you, you could understand that, okay, the person, if this is in our case, like learning development manager in the companies at 500 plus in US, this uh, ICP might not work for us, but let's say the same ICP with Brazil might work. So once you go get all of the uh, data, you now can validate and rate the rate. Okay, now you're launching another campaign and that's how you're testing always. It's all about data-driven approach, getting the results, constantly change, checking, innovating, and, and reiterate and trying, trying, trying. And even if your campaign is perfect today, in six months, it might not be because Google will release new updates and your strategy will be obsolete. But the, the framework pretty much stays the same. You know who you're selling to kind of, you understand mm -hmm. their pain, you you understand the channel, how you would reach them, you build this trust, and then you get the data, reiterate, and starting again yeah is this a stressful thing to do i mean if, if google can change the algorithm overnight then essentially you are building a house of cards yeah but uh, this is a uh, it's uh, this is something that uh i i think relevant to all of uh 
all of businesses in all industries. Because like if you rely on uh, inbound marketing, on search engine optimization, it's the same thing here. Google can change something and you we will drop in the position. Uh, if you rely on paid ads, let's say your competitors start to uh, start to invest more in paid ads, you're already not getting the same results, you know, and it's it's getting much more uh, competitive and expensive. So it's always like that, and this is about competition, and it's always stressful. So uh, the part of your DNA would be, you know, uh, you need to win regardless, and you will need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And uh, there would be always opportunities. It's it's always uh, possibilities. You just need to you know to find them. It's basically the same thing as entrepreneurship. It's just even more accelerated because the uh, the marketing landscape fa moves faster than general industry uh, landscapes. Marketing uh, evolves faster, and then you just have to do everything faster and and be more resilient, I guess. 100%. It, uh, and this is, you know, there are several rules about entrepreneurship and about the building a product that uh, one of the one first rule is like focus on the quality of the product more than on just uh, uh, on just on the cost of the producing. So try to build something that is uh, relevant and people can use actually. Uh, the second rule would be, you know, focus on the, on the revenue generation. So mm -hmm. revenue generation is very important. It's not about you know just uh, some some kind of uh, social activity. You do business or something. You're an entrepreneur. You need to make money. And the third rule is that follow two first rules: build something that people like, and focus on generating revenue from that. If something doesn't work with your product, change the positioning, change the model, but make this product you know work. Uh, sometimes I talk to the startup founders and they uh, basically struggle to find the business models, struggling to find product market fit. And I'm always pointing them, you know, to the who are your customer and what their problem. You need mm -hmm. first to identify that and what the the problem that they will be, you know, uh, what's the solution they, they're ready to pay for. And you need to figure this out. Once you figure this out, then this is a business, this is a startup. That's how you actually can do stuff. Yeah, love it, love it. Well, that's fantastic. So, so Vitaly, uh, let's go back to AI.io. So what is the ideal content that can be amplified through AI-driven voices and, and who are the ideally suited customers for you? Yeah, so uh, we started the company with a kind of... Um, horizontal approach where we were offering the solution as a video editor for everybody. So you, with any use case, you can generate videos, whether it's marketing videos, social media videos, or training videos. And uh, recently we, we narrowed our focus to, to learning and development video content. We see how we can benefit the big companies, educational institutions, or even SMBs as well to create training video content. So that's where we focusing right now. Also, something that we recently uh, released and it's currently in the beta, but we will make it bigger. It's called real-time uh, conversation with digital avatars. So uh, prior to what we were building, you, you needed to render the video. So you type the text, you need to, to wait a couple of minutes and then you receive the video where the avatar is speaking. Now, basically with this release, you are able to Talk with digital human. It can be a, a digital teacher or chatbot or whatever, but it has a face. So now you can ask questions and the avatar will answer you in real time. So using that application, now all of the chatbots in different companies who, uh, who will need more engaging type of solution, they can integrate with us and use it. So this is another big portion that we're working on. And... And yeah, but the focus would be still in learning and development. And I think that's where we can give a lot of value from product perspective. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. So you can now employ real-time chatbots, essentially, who will talk your language and will represent your company. And uh, they, they they look more uh, more relatable and and can help you people better. That, that's really cool. So... 
So, yeah. Vitaly, if people would like to find out how they can employ such a virtual chatbot or how they can get uh, this technology into their business and improve their uh, learning and development functions, or they want to reach out to you, where do they find you? Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, you can go to eli.io and book a demo with the team, or you can find me in LinkedIn, Vitaly Romanchenko, and I don't know, send me a message and uh, I will reply, I'll reply to you as well. Uh, yeah, so we are pretty much available online. So uh, if you're interested, just book a demo with the team. Awesome. So definitely don't miss it. Li.io, it's E-L-A-I.io. Uh, check it out. It's an amazing technology. And I think we all have to use this kind of technology if you don't want to fall behind our competitors. So check it out. Uh, Vitaly, thanks for coming on the show and sharing some state-of-the-art technology with our entrepreneurial audience. Thanks, Steve. It was a pleasure talking to you and thanks, audience. It was a pleasure.